Hello and welcome to the show. This is an exciting one because we are dueling Docker captains today. Before we get to that, um, I would just want to, for those of you that haven't been here before and you haven't seen this live, uh, this is my channel. And I talk about Docker and Kubernetes and all things containers, cloud native, uh, not just the cloud. Obviously, obviously, we got data centers and IoT, but everything related around the container ecosystem. So I hope you're here for questions and answers, because that's why I do this live. So you can ask questions and hopefully my guest or I have answers. So real quick, just some logistics on that. Get your questions in early, because we'll basically go through chat in order and try to answer your questions. And then uh, don't forget about my Patreon page. That's how you can support this show and the podcast and other open source I'm doing related to this stuff. So I have a bunch of stuff on GitHub for learning. Obviously there's courses you can pay for, but over here on Patreon, you don't have to sign, you can sign up for free and all you have to do is click the follow button. And that's basically a 
easy way to get all the announcements about what's on my live show coming up, all the free software and uh, open source that I create, uh, any blog articles or videos that I post. You'll just get a stream of the new content that I'm doing. And that's it's a it's maybe once or maybe twice a week. Um, if you want to buy me a coffee every month, I really appreciate it. That helps support this show. And then you get access to some exclusive benefits, including our Discord channel. So check out devops.fan right above me. DevOps.fan is where you can sign up for Discord chat. It's like Slack. It's like IRC, all the other things. But it's kind of where we're hanging out nowadays. Uh, and we, I think we just crossed several thousand, uh, two or 3,000. I can't remember exactly how many people we got in there. But we, we're hanging out there every day talking about DevOps and containers. All right. So let's move on with this exciting show. I'm glad to f finally have on the show one of our more recent Docker captains, uh, Captain WSL Corsair, <laughs> which that's why he goes on the internet. Um, but I want to thank you so much for being on the show, Nuno Ducamero, Ducarmo. Um, I practiced okay. that name <laughs> ten times, and I still didn't get it right. Carmo, all the that's way from okay. Switzerland. Thank, thank, yeah, th thanks a lot, Brett, for having me, and uh, really excited to be here. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad to have you on the show. I have. So, like, I found out about you through you just nonstop talking about WSL on Twitter for long, uh, well before you became a captain. And I loved all the WSL stuff you were putting out because it, I thought it, you know, back before we had WSL 2, you know, in the early days. And I, and I loved WSL. I loved bringing more Linux into Windows 10 because it's one of the reasons I loved Mac was it had the underpinnings of, of BSD and that Linux feel. And now Windows has that, and I feel like I should have I should dump all my Apple stuff and go back to Windows because that's like where all the cool stuff happens now. So, <laughs> indeed, indeed, come back. So, no, what got you? Uh, what got you stuck with WSL? Like, uh, sorry if you were going that down that down that road, but like, no, 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 no. why? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll try to really compact it because I want to answer some questions. Uh, but it's like uh, 2008, so. Some time even ago, I, I, I made a let's say a career switch from being a Windows supporter uh, on the field, and then they uh, the company I was there uh, they uh, asked me if I wanted to be a junior Linux and Unix administrator, especially Unix. And what happened at that time is that I didn't have any way to practice. I was really junior, and being a junior they will not let you kind of VPN into the servers while you're not at work, uh, at, let's say the, the first time. And I really missed the, let's say a playground that was not Seguin really, nothing against Seguin and props to them actually for all the work they did. Uh, but I needed something that I wanted to keep my Windows machine, uh, not having maybe a VM because it was still consuming, like let's say 2008 is like eight gig of RAM is like, wow, you have a Rolls Royce. So um, it means that I, I, I needed something lighter. And then fast forward, what happened is like when WSL came out in 2016 uh, with uh, Windows 10 Insiders, one of the first Insiders actually released, I was like, okay, that's exactly the place I wanted eight years ago. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm no more Unix admin, I'm no more Linux administrator, but still WSL really, let's say, uh, appealed to me. So since then I've been, let's say, blogging, trying crazy stuff for my, let's say, as a hobbyist, and it led me to, to today, actually. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, the the obviously the first version of WSL was it was powerful and it was still great, but then like a lot of us wanted, we wanted more, right? Like we wanted to, we wanted a full kernel, um, but we also wanted the convenience of WSL. We wanted to be able to turn it on and off and wanted to sort of have all those conveniences of feeling like it's native in our Windows machine. And then, uh, so la was it last year we got WSL too? I think that's when it was released. Uh, I think it was yeah, last so, year. So last year, the what we got was like the official release the insiders of wsl2 is quite old already old in it terms right but it's like 2018 around ish i think don't quote me on that but i, I guess it yeah. was like 2018. so last year though after one year and a half kind of let's say testing and tries out and everything uh 
uh, with Windows 10 2004, which is the number of the version, so 2004. Okay. Right. Um, it became, let's say, production ready in terms of clients. Okay, on, on, on Windows 10. So it was a feature that was on production, on production release. Right. And and then, of course, Docker uh, was early, like they were working with it before. Because yeah. um, in WSL 1, I, I'm just going to call it WSL 1. I guess that's what we call it now. Mm -hmm. Cla WSL Classic. <laughs> uh, well, version yeah. 1. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had um, we didn't really have Docker support. Like you could maybe get it working through making the you know the publishing the port essentially of the Docker engine, and kind of, but it wasn't really mm -hmm. built in a Docker desktop. It wasn't easy. I think uh, the other Docker captain uh, Nick Janatakis had a, a nice walkthrough of yeah. like how to get your Docker desktop to work with WSL one. But now that we have WSL two, Docker desktop prefers that, and Docker now recommends that which means anyone yeah. who's using Docker on Windows needs to have this set up, right? Yeah, exactly. So j just a small parenthesis, uh, WSL1 had like, let's say two ways of doing, of reaching. And like the second way is like 2A and 2B. The, the first way that's uh, actually thanks to, um, I, I think it's Jason or John Starks, uh, G Giga Starks, he goes by Giga Starks from, um, from Microsoft. What he did is like he created like a tunnel, kind of, of uh, between the Docker socket that could not exist in WSL one because of the file system how it was built, to the name uh, named pipe of uh, which is the socket if you want on Windows side for Docker desktop on uh, Windows. So he created the what he called like the end pipe relay, and that allowed us to actually have the CLI uh, on WSL and connecting through sockets pipe okay to the name pipe of windows so that yeah. was actually one of the preferred ways uh nick the what he, he brought up was really excellent and he published actually the the port uh, 3375 which is let's say the, the the normal http port then uh someone uh, created like the I think it was this someone is <laughs> none other than uh, Captain Scherer, okay, <laughs> Stefan Scherer, and um, he he did like a, a full container of how to implement like the HTTPS, okay. So that was like the the, the three ways kind of that we could have. Then comes WSL two. Now we have a normal socket we can install first. So the the first time it was like we had the Mobi VM still. I still will call it like that. And then we had like, we could install WSL, or sorry, Docker on WSL2. Then uh, Simon and the team of Docker did a lot of, uh, of work that's called Bridge together. And nowadays we have the Docker desktop with the WSL2 backend. That works just fabulously. Yeah. And that catches us up today, till today. By the way, while we're here, I should mention, um... <laughs> Nuno has a great website, uh, WSL.dev. So if you had ever doubts about his commitment to WSL, <laughs> his website <laughs> is WSL. So Actually, um, I'm a writer for this site. Sorry, I have to shout out to Brian Kettleson. Uh, that's his website. That's his, let's say, address. And he did it like for really the WSL community. So oh. trust me, I'm just a writer. Oh, you're just a writer on it. Well, you're still, a, you're still got like, this is all you, right? Like these... <laughs> All these for posters. Now, for now, yes, but that's again props to yeah. him. Yeah, and so check that out. If, if, yeah, because you're doing you're doing a lot. I mean, like Red Hat Eight and WSL Two. I mean, this is some pretty advanced stuff. Multipass, which is one of my favorite ways to run VMs if I have to. Um, you know, especially on Mac. Uh, you know, places where I don't have WSL. Like that, that. That's some really cool stuff you're doing. So, for people that are into WSL Two, definitely check that out. All right, so let's get some questions in real quick, and then we're, we, I know we've got tons of demos and ideas of things to talk about, but you know we're here for the people. So let's see what we got here. All right, so for those of you asking questions, um, we're going to focus on questions around WSL2 
maybe something specific about Windows 10. But uh, if you're asking questions, like there's a question here about logs and ECS. Unfortunately, uh, someone in chat might be able to help you, but um, we don't have enough time to go into all the questions. So Biker is up first, I think. Um, Here's a question. He says, we have a build server that could handle both Linux and .NET framework image builds. It would seem that a Windows server and WSL2 could do both with PowerShell remote to send requests. And I'm sad. And believe me, I, I've, let's say, done demos, uh, actually, of MicroKate and Docker on uh, literally server 2019 uh, with WSL2. However, the sad part now, uh, this week, uh, Taylor Brown, like the, the head PM or head program manager of Hyper-V and containers uh, at Microsoft, uh, he is like discarding a little bit the ID and start, not start, but continue to concentrate maybe on uh, Linux containers on Windows, LCAL. Right, so okay. I would love it. I would love it. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, the ID is definitively uh, like possible because I've done it like running also the, the two demons uh, at the same time. I did like twice, one is in WSL1, another in WSL2. So I could have like the, the, the demon for Windows containers and then the, the demon for uh, Linux containers. Right. Uh, totally hacky, not supported. Okay. So it was more like a proof of concept from my side. Oh, okay. But yeah. Yeah, so it's like WSL2 on 2019 will be fabulous. Still, you will need to have Docker daemon, like the Docker for enterprise on Windows installed by yourself, like with uh, what they did, like through the PowerShell commands. Plus, you will need to install also the Docker daemon on top of WSL2. So that's why if you go the route of Windows containers only, like with the demon of Windows, you will also be able to leverage LCAL. Maybe in the future, there will be like, a, and I guess that's the idea, I don't know, but there will might be like an LCAL 2 or something like this. Like it will be like even, uh, even lighter uh, micro VM that will be like WSL2 and at the same time, Windows containers, like demon of Windows. I, I right. don't know, that, that's how I see it. But yeah, to it totally... That's really cool. I, I didn't. I didn't realize you went that. Ad, like you went that deep into trying to run both. And and it. It's not apparent when someone thinks of this idea. Like, oh, I want to build Windows containers that are, are Windows binary because that's the .NET framework, right? I'm because he's not saying core .NET core. So we're talking about traditional framework. I guess at this point it's now legacy framework. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so like the, yeah, Windows containers as well as Linux containers, which would require two kernels and two. Essentially, not necessarily, well, it would require two demons, right? The demons have to run yeah. on the kernel that they're going to build on. And then that that inherently creates a bunch of complexity. Like, are we dealing with Docker context? Are we are we switching context? Are we expecting Docker to know this? Because, and I don't know if you were saying this, but like before we had WSL, back when we had Hyper-V, there was a mode that you could get into if you're on... I think it was like, I don't know if it was the Windows container mode. There was a, basically a beta feature that allowed you to run both. And what it was really doing in the background was when you specified a particular platform, the Docker command line was yeah, pointing so, to so it. That's the LCAL Is part. that what that was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, exactly. so I wasn't wasn't sure if that was that. Because I didn't use it very yeah. long, and it, and it never really made a lot of headlines. Like, you know, in nope. other words, running both at the same time on a, on a single virtual network. Um this all this stuff gets really complicated really fast when you start talking about two different kernels and building two different types of containers. To me, and, and this is just my opinion, but the Docker model now is you have a you have a server. It's either running Windows or Linux. It runs a Docker binary for that kernel, and in your Docker command, which is essentially what you're using in your you know your build server, your build servers running a Docker command, that can change context and point to any server it wants to. In fact, the new Docker buildx command, can, can you can actually have it pointing to multiple servers at the same time and building simultaneously. And to me, that's the model that Docker's like going after, not trying to create like a, almost like a split, a split brain personality of being able to figure out which server it's supposed to to me that's docker context like that's just pointing right. to a different machine yeah. yeah and and that 
uh, Biker is a regular on the show. Um, so even though what Nuno is saying might be some, there might be some wizardry that's possible there. Um, to me, it would seem cleaner and easier from a maintenance standpoint is to just have the Windows server, have the Linux server. Because, you know, when you're running Linux in WSL2, you're essentially running win Linux VMs in Windows. So you're not saving. Right. I, don't, I don't see where there's a complexity savings or like a time savings by setting it all up on one VM. Because it's, uh, it's like a nested uh, VM at that point. Yeah, exactly. So, and that, that's a good point because... If you want WSL2, your let's say your VM needs to have like the nested virtualization enabled. Yeah. Okay. And even for LCAO, LCAO is like you have like a, a small uh, kind of uh, yeah disk, a uh, small kernel, very small kernel, a small Linux system. It you install it, and actually the Docker daemon uh, from Windows is able to actually. Um, see it and run the micro VM uh, in Hyper-V virtualization platform. So now I'm just dropping names, but uh, I will explain it a little bit later. And actually what happened is like LCAL was done before WSL2. LCAL was the, let's say the yeah. ID, how yeah. the L WSL2 came, came to be. So now the problem is like they were, WSL2 went so well, so fast, that LCAL, I guess, lost, lo sorry, lost a lot of momentum. Yeah. Not only in the community, but potentially also inside Microsoft itself, because we don't see like much, let's say, news about it. Like you say, it didn't. They didn't make the headlines, and still, the LCAL with just one daemon having like you just say like dash dash platform, and then it's like if it's Linux, it builds with uh, the small LCAL. It's like a firecracker VM. Like it spawns up, dies, right? It's, it's like a, a kind of container mindset. And WSL2 is more permanent. And I guess that's why maybe uh, Microsoft doesn't really like it because it's like, it's permanent. It means that it adds maybe a surface of attack, of course. Uh, I don't want to enter too much insecurity, but still yeah. it's like a new feature and it, stuff like that, right? So maybe, I don't know, like maybe an LCAL2 a bit more, let's say, uh, able to, to change things. Again, the context, like you said, now, especially with uh, Docker since 1903, I think, or something like this, we have like dash dash context for almost all the commands, if not all. So the build is like, you just point out uh, where you want. Now it's more like, if you, want, if you want a build server, like generic build server, yeah. I mean, for me, it makes sense, right? So again, I'm not in the head of Microsoft, but for me, it makes little sense. Yeah, yeah, and um, and yeah, and Biker's replying, and he's like, I, you know, I get it. Uh, two different build servers, and yeah, and and you know, Docker, just like Kubernetes, has this expectation that you know your your servers that are running these demons, you know, whether it's the Kubernetes API or the Docker daemon, like these can be remote things. And your client is connecting to them over various methods, depending on the OS and, and whether you have SSH or you're actually opening up the TCP socket or whatever you're doing. And yeah. that is like build servers is to me the server world where the servers should be, you know, infrastructure as code. It should be automatically deployed. Like it's, it's uh, you can tear them down, you can spin them back up, which is why whenever I hear something like this, I think complexity, complexity, complexity. To me, that's more in the world of a local desktop for a developer, which is where we get to talk about Docker Desktop, because Docker Desktop is really focused on the local developer. It's it's not a server tool. That's where you put the Docker daemon on. So if we get to this question from Moore on, do you think WSL2 plus Docker Desktop are production ready? Which is an interesting question, because for production what? <laughs> exactly, exactly. How would you answer that question? Okay. Let me take like the route of WSL fanboy right now. Sorry. Okay. It's like, yes, it's ready. So for developers, for even operators potentially that have their machine, they need to SSH into servers. They might have to build some scripts and then try them out against some servers and everything. Go WSL2. WSL2 again, it's on the release, let's say channel of Windows 10 means it's like production ready by the terms of licensing and support. 
okay if I, if we go like that that row now does wsl2 like not break is perfect and everything in in the perfect world no we have performance issues we will get there too again afterwards uh on the way that you work with wsl2 and that's maybe the the, the problem here is like how do you work at work, right? Not at home, but at work. How do you work? How to optimize WSL2 usage to actually be able to perform your work, your daily work, without network issues, without performance issues, uh, potential FS issues again. So I'm not saying that WSL2 has all these. They don't have if you kind of use it like say the, the way it's supposed to be used. The problem is like nowadays WSL2 and WSL by, by default, right, was this uh, idea of uh, full interoperability. Sorry if I say it bad, but it's like yeah, full said... interop. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Sometimes I, I will have my French that will come back. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the full interop is like your user space, right, of Linux, you are installing your uh, applications in it, you are maybe launching some process in there, you can access them from Windows, and also you can access actually Windows file systems and maybe other, let's say, processes from WSL, which is good. But then happens the reality, and the reality is that if you work from WSL shell into a file system of Windows stored in Windows sites, and you try, I don't know, like to do a NPM or a Ruby or something like this. Again, I'm not a developer, so I'm just showing out what I read on, on Twitter and the internet. But it's like you will have several issues of performance, like big performance issues, actually. However, if you work on your own, let's say, distro and environment of F or file system, right, of WSL within WSL distro then you will see that your performance might like disappear or be there, but not as much as, as you were working on uh, the Windows file system. So prod ready, technically speaking, legally speaking, support, support speaking, yes. Is it prod ready for the mindset that you, not, you need to bring to your developers? Maybe that's the challenge nowadays. Yeah, I mean, and all these tools, you know, have their edge cases, right? Like you're saying, there there are um, there are potential problems. One of the things that I always recommend people do is, it, you know, one definitely do WSL two. Like, you don't know if it's going to solve problems or if it's going to be a problem until you try it. And it's we've had it for almost a year. Um, so we've had lot, you know, we've had major w Microsoft Windows releases. Docker has had tons of releases that have improved the performance and the, and the little side issues. Um, but they have a page for WSL in the Docker docs, and it has best practices, which get into some of the questions that we get about how do I bind mount for proper performance? Um, for example, it's saying like, don't do this. Um, you know, that's actually, you're actually gonna have, poor file performance if you do that. Instead, yeah. use the tilde when you're doing a Docker run. When you're ever using compose files, always use the tilde to get your, basically let the OS decide how to replace the directory structure uh, of your current working directory. Anyway, so there's there's some stuff like that. And they have other recommendations, like you know changing the utility VM. Uh, there's actually a link here that goes to uh, the config that you can set up for your your Linux VM under WSL2. So I'm just going to post this while we're talking about it. We don't have to go through step by step, but um, yeah, for people but that didn't actually, know, the mount the mount does exactly what I was explaining. Is like uh, if you do it like locally, it's okay. But then when you do it Docker, like you are mounting a file on the FS, let's say on the Windows file system. Now you are inside Docker, so you might forget that, right? So yeah. you are working in these slash users, right? So now you are doing your, your development and you try to, let's say, pull some uh, dependencies or packages. Now the full pass is like you are on Docker and it goes to actually the utility VM, what they call, but let's say the, the VM from Docker desktop that is stored in WSL. And then it will finally make the, the let's say, the file system calls to the Windows side. So now the performance, we are back to square one where WSL yeah. working from WSL 
on Windows file system for, let's say, big files manipulations, you will have performance issues. But due to the, let's say, all these layers of inceptions, and that's why I, I try always to explain in my blogs specifically, is like from the very beginning is like, I see, I, I love Legos. Okay, let's start like that. I love Legos, right? But when you build a Lego, you have like layers, right? And I try to understand the, these layers. At first, I see I have the full picture. I want to do this, okay? I want to, let's say, deploy a Docker Compose of an application and done, okay? I will do it. Then I will try to go, re, let's say, backwards and try to understand what I did and where it came from, okay? Again, I say I try. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. Uh, Sorry, I'm not succeeding, but the, most of the time I'm really trying to just understand what I did and what were like the components involved. So when we have Docker desktop with WSL2 backend, think about like you are running Docker from a WSL2, uh, let's say, distro, which is just the, the Docker distro here. And the Docker distro is actually sharing the daemon, uh, sorry, the sockets and the CLIs um towards the other distros that we want maybe to actually uh interact with but right yeah, mainly is like the, the, their best practice is exactly that don't mount if you if you need to mount let's say uh to perform files manipulation don't mount the the windows file system so the slash mnt slash c something else uh try to use the home so the tilde right because it, you will stay on your own, um, on your own, let's say, WSL2 distro file system. Yeah, yeah, it'll keep you. It'll keep you, and and within the boundaries of what's what's better. And this is actually true. Like in all my courses, everywhere I talk about, like I never recommend to people, especially in compose files, you hard code pass when you're doing bind mounts, right? You just don't use full pass because if you're if you're, you're probably putting that in a Docker file, you know, not Docker file, but in a Docker command, and if you're doing a Docker run command on an uh, on a regular basis, you're probably going to end up right in a script, or you're going to put it in a compose file. And if these things have hard coded paths like slash mount slash c, then you can't share it. Like it won't work with anyone else's setup because they'll have a different path. So I always talk about you know using those those paths like uh, in compose you you know you would put a dot for the current working directory because your compose file is usually in the directory with your code. Anyway, so. These are uh, great topics to, to when someone's starting to get in WSL just to make sure they stay in the supported rails, you know, staying on the rails of what's supported and what's fast. The um, the other the next question was uh, <laughs> any perspectives on Docker plus WSL on Windows 10 for <laughs> ARM? Anton Anton's going for the uh, the hard ones. I don't know. So I don't have an arm. I know where you come from. Like, why? Because someone else just asked me the question a few minutes before. <laughs> so I, I really don't have a, I don't really have an ID. However, we can definitely ask, uh, let's say, in the captain's channel, or I, I might ask and I will get back to you. Or uh, just ping me on, uh, on Twitter or Brett and we will have a look. But yeah, it's, uh, I, seriously, it's like they brought Docker, uh, Docker desktop for the M1 right now, right? They, 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 they have it or I mean, they, they are right. It's beta. Yeah. It's beta. And it works. Okay. Yeah, it works. I, it's right behind me actually. And it, it does work. Okay. So, so I guess that windows arm, it's just might make sense because Docker engineers develop also on Mac normally most of the time, and they are also using the, the VMs, right? Now it needs that. WSL2 being, a, again, a micro VM, but still a VM, it needs that your VM from the, let's say, the ARM perspective, if you are on Mac, I'm supposing that you are on Mac, right? So you need that your uh, hypervisor is a nested virtualization uh, capable. Does it make, was it yeah. English? Okay, sorry. Yeah. So it's capable of doing nested virtualization, sorry. Yeah. So, um, well, so yeah, and it's, in this case, yeah, I think what he's asking is um, basically without the M1, like th just thinking about Windows on ARM on the Snapdragon processors. Um, right. So, so 
Uh, while he while you were talking, and I saw this question, so I went and looked it up in the roadmap. So for those of you that haven't heard me talk about it, like on nearly every show, when someone asks a question about Docker that doesn't exist yet because Docker hasn't made it, you go look at the roadmap. Docker has a public roadmap on GitHub at slash Docker slash roadmap, and you can see they actually have a project in here. You can see the Kanban board, um, the what they're working on, what they're considering, what they finished, like you can actually see all that. But there is an issue in here that's almost a year old, uh, about eight months old, on supporting Docker Desktop on Windows on ARM for like for the Windows surfaces that have come out on ARM and stuff like that, right? And what's interesting about it, and I didn't know this until just five minutes ago, um, Justin, uh, who is now the CTO of Docker, is in there weighing in and basically saying, you know, uh, you can get the Docker binaries and install them without Docker Desktop. And you can get them from git.docker.com and it supports Windows on ARM just fine. Uh, you won't have um, you won't have all the niceties of Docker Desktop, but you can basically get it working, is what he was saying. That was a, almost that was last May. So it's a long I, I didn't read the whole thing. There's a ton of conversation back and forth. Um, so there isn't necessarily a GUI installer. But it looks like you can get some of these things working in WSL2 on Windows on ARM, which I have not tried. Um, I just yeah, downloaded that, today the the WSL2, or sorry, the Windows on ARM Insider Preview, which I think, yeah, which now is going to su potentially support x86 emulation. Like... There's levels of complexity here that I don't think it's hard to conceptualize. Like you got a Windows on ARM machine, it's running on ARM, and now you want to run Docker. But are you really wanting to run ARM containers on Docker on the ARM, or are you wanting to run your traditional Intel x86 64, which would require QEMU or um, and this new thing from Windows, which is similar to the Apple M1 stuff, where Apple M1 has Rosetta 2. Windows 10 now has this insider preview of running the x86 stuff on ARM. But I don't think that's going to work in containers because the containers are using a Linux kernel. So the thing that Microsoft released is probably a Windows kernel thing to run Windows apps. Not It's not going to help Docker containers run on ARM. It's Anyway, it gets... Like, we could have a whole show trying to even just break that down. I feel like we need a diagram, and we just have to break this stuff down. Here, the Docker, the Docker daemon, if you download it, it's, it's like it's the, the Linux path, right? So you just go yeah. install WSL2, download the Docker D uh, or the Docker daemon and the Docker CLI for exactly. ARM. And then you yeah. just run it. So it will not be, like you said, it will not be Docker desktop, per se. Right. It won't work in PowerShell. It, it'll, it works only in the WSL2 V. That's a better way to say it. Yeah, this is not a, this is not Docker.exe that we're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, great question, though. Thank you, Anton. Uh, always has the good questions. Um, Hayden's asking, what are some of the ways to use K8s on uh, WSL? My friend Aiden. Okay. Uh, so it's a tricky question because normally is, we swap roles. Normally he's the one speaking and I'm the one like uh, throwing like curveballs at him. <laughs> um, so there's definitely different ways of using micro -cates. Um Sorry. Okay. I already answered, but yeah, okay. Uh, different ways of using Kubernetes on the WSL2. Uh, micro case is one, it needs some, let's say, uh, workaround script, but still it works great. Uh, mm -hmm. All the Docker uh, base like kinds K3D will work with, uh, let's say, with just a small glitch is that it needs to run on uh, Docker, um, doc uh, sorry, yeah, Docker on WSL2, not Docker desktop. Uh, there's a problem with the, the networking actually and how Docker desktop, let's say, namespace the, the, the network. And so you will not be able to open the ports normally. Like if you run kind or T3D on Docker desktop, you will be blocked when you will be exposing the ports to services, for example. Oh, really? Um, okay. So that that's, let's say, that's a caveat. Uh, caveat sorry. Uh, I spoke with Simon here and there uh, from time to time, but it was like, for now, at least, it's how it's done. And uh, I think they were working on it. Maybe, I don't know. So, um, the Docker desktop, However, sorry, the Docker desktop 
K eights install, right? That just works fine, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. That, that, so, that was my my next one. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I didn't, no, 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 I, no, I no, didn't, no, no, no. I didn't know if you if you said it at first and I missed it. But yeah, just to be clear, yeah, Docker Desktop does it automatically. But there's also all these other ways that you can get working in some fashion. So yeah, exactly. So the Docker Desktop Kubernetes. I mean, if it's like one node and you don't really care like uh, to have multi-node or not like uh, what kind or k3d can do quite right. easily for you or micro kates uh through maybe like one in those cell two and another on multipass that's what i've done in the past so that will work okay Th that you will have multi-node so multi-node docker desktop not possible single node but still for your let's say for the majority maybe of developers that will be quite enough when you are learning, however, and that's why I'm I'm always like uh, trying out these multi-node setups because I want to learn how to deal with multi-node. How does really the applications behave? Because we Kubernetes brings like all these self-healing, auto-scaling, or horizontal scaling. Maybe not auto, but um, uh, horizontal scaling and so on. Okay, cool. But how do I see it myself if I want to learn? Right. So uh, what is a control plane versus an agent or versus a worker? Right. Uh, how, how do you set up them, right? Uh, so the, the goal here, the, the multi-node pass for me, is really a learning pass. Can you like emulate production? I don't really think so, uh, to be totally sincere, right? Because when you are in production, Kubernetes, maybe you have way more servers. Maybe that doesn't enter in, uh, let's say, in. Um, in calculation, but you might have like the let's say network routes. You have uh, maybe other policies and security settings, monitoring, logging, whatever. So if you want to reproduce fully your let's say work environment into a, a local cluster, good luck for now. Not impossible potentially, but let's say it will be quite difficult. Uh, so when you are at home, if you have Docker desktop already, just plug Kubernetes Docker from Docker desktop, your services will work, your ports will be mapped as as it should and everything. I'm just stating like the other ones, like Kind and K3D, they will get blocked, okay? Right. At, at the network site, again. Yeah, and, in the, and you know, WSL2, to, for me, it was always about, WSL2's focus was always about making it easier to do Linux stuff while you're on your Windows machine, but it doesn't, this, just because it's running a Linux kernel now, to me, I don't, I don't think of it conceptually as, oh, I can make a bunch of Linux servers like you can with Multipass or VirtualBox or, you know, in, you know, VMware or anything else. Like if if I wanted as similar as possible for multi-node setup, you're right, I, I would probably go with one of those things rather than trying to force w, WSL2 into that to that hole. Like I I I would want to we do something. Have. Yeah, I, I did it. So I I have a blog post. Speak speaking about how you can do multi-nodes Kubernetes on WSL2. Okay. Require some users, because again, when you run, even if you run multiple distributions on WSL2, you have like one WSL2 instance that is bound yeah. to you, okay? So it's one VM, one micro VM, and then you run all the distros that are separated uh, virtually, yeah. maybe by namespace or something like this, okay? Right. So it's separated, right. but it's like still one VM at the end of the day. So the way I, I, I okay, the way I found it, it's, it's like if you create like another, even a normal user, that it's not your user, you just create another user on Windows and you spin up like... Oh, we got some lag. Picture froze. But my sound is okay. Oh, you're back. All right. Okay, you said you tried sorry. to create. You tried to create another user on Windows. Right. So you create another user on Windows, and then you run WSL2 with um, with PowerShell, for example, with against that window, uh, this new Windows user. And actually, what it will do is like it will spin up like a new uh, micro VM for WSL2. And now you have a multi node. Oh, because, okay. So if you're a single user, you essentially are still always using one Linux kernel in, in, Windows, in WSL2. But, yeah, it, but, exactly. but it's per user of Windows. So if you had a multi-user Windows machine, yeah, okay. So you'd have isolated uh, Windows or Linux VMs running WSL2. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, because uh, that's the way I understood it, too, was like there's whether you're using namespaces in Linux, um, w whether it's technically containers uh, that they're doing in their, you know, mm. their own way, um, mm. LXC, whatever they might be doing. Like, th But there's definitely some magic. Otherwise, every time we wanted to download a, a new WSL2 machine, we'd probably be downloading like a, a gig image like Multipass does. Like we'd be downloading a, a full VHD yeah. or something. Um, so, okay, we got tons of more questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go through them rapidly because we also have demos. We want to talk about like getting this set up and um, but these are all really great questions. So I want to get through them. Um, do you know anything about new features coming to WSL? Like uh, basically the question was, what do we expect from the next WSL release? Um, so everyone is uh, waiting, me first, for the, let's say, the integrated GUI. Uh, so WSL team uh, in WSL2 this year, hopefully, will actually roll out the, the GUI apps, finally, <laughs> uh, for, for, from within WSL2. Okay, so nowadays you can run GUI apps. Okay, but still, you need to install the X server on WSL2 site. Hmm. Uh, you need to have a WSL, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah, w X server still, but you, you need to have a, a X server outside, like uh, X, X Wing, or it's like v, VCX SRV and X410. Yeah. X4, okay, whatever. So on, on the Windows side. Then yeah, the, the, you have to yeah, the export client. the IP. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So you have to export the IP to connect from WSL2 to, to connect to the X server from Windows. And finally, you can run your applications. So you okay. have to really kind of know X server, which those of us who have had Linux desktops for, I mean, like 20 years ago, we were manually doing this. You know, I was having to learn xserver.org versus the traditional X server and like setting up clients and yeah, and there's there, there's a lot to it. I mean, we have the same thing on Mac, where like if you want to run Linux things on Mac, if you build them for Mac, that's great. But then you need an X11 server to run them. But yeah. like no one no one really wants to do that, right? So you're saying that like WSL2 will come out of the box, where if I install Ubuntu on WSL2, yeah. it'll I can have like the GUI just natively. So they they will have they will have Wayland. So they went like future mode. So they want they discarded fully X11. Even though Wayland okay. have the X11 also, but they will be Wayland based. Uh, and then you will be able like to use your applications, like uh, if you do like a remote desktop. But instead of, I guess you will be able to have also the desktop. But for now, the demos were more like you'll be able to actually. Uh, just uh, open your application, Firefox, uh, how it's called, like uh, gedit or something like this, okay, Gnome yeah. applications, for example, and they will just appear on your uh, on your desktop without the need of installing this Windows ser this X server oh, okay. on Windows. Okay. So it sounds like so a little bit like Parallels on Mac has this thing called Confluence, where my Windows exactly. apps and my VM will just show up on my Mac, and they'll I'll have this, I can resize them. Yeah, yeah, cool. Exactly. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So that uh, that's the big that's the big news, my guess for for still this year. They 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 already. I mean, they will complete the implementation. Uh, I don't know where they are, but uh, we have already like in the preview. We have like the also the. How do you say the NVIDIA and AMD uh, GPU capabilities? Mm. So you can run now some ML AI uh, workloads with the GPU on Windows through from WSL, which brings us that you can run Docker and GPU based applications like that needs GPU calculation, again machine learning AI uh, now. So, yeah, so it's it's in it's in the insiders, but you can have the dash dash GPU, and then it will it will uh, leverage the GPU of your computer. There you go. All right. So the, I don't know if we have those questions yet, but that was one topic that I didn't put on the list was GPU support. So now we have uh, on the insider preview builds we have um, GPU support in WSL two, like a special Linux driver essentially that they take care of, and now Docker Desktop will use that. So that you can type Docker, yeah. Docker run dash dash GPU, and you will be able to, like you said, use machine uh, machine learning or any sort of GPU computation stuff, which has been for years. We've had that in various levels of support in Docker, but it's always been tricky, 
And this sounds like the easiest way. Now, it's not probably something that you should set up this way. Like Docker Desktop, again, getting back to the beginning, what we talked about earlier, Docker Desktop is not yeah. meant for server farms. Like Docker Desktop is designed for a, a person on their Windows machine who needs easier management of Windows on their machine. If you're on servers, you're probably going to be using a different installation method for Docker, usually using the Docker dot or the get.docker.com script or you know, a PowerShell script or however you want to install it. So um, cause I, we always get that question and the confusion around the difference between Docker locally for development and for testing and the difference between that and a server that may be headless, may not have a monitor on it, right, that you are that you just need to automate um, for running containers. So, uh, And WSL2 follows like the now server and Windows 10 are kind of aligned in, the, let's say, the numbering. But it means like if you go today into uh, Windows uh, Server 2019, your version will be, uh, I don't know, 1863 or so, whatever, I mean. And it means that you will not have everything that WSL2 got since then, mm. right? So you need to be careful about like, even if you go server, where do you stand in terms of also the, the let's say the part of WSL2 itself? Because it has his own life cycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, for me, I, in my world, if I have to run Windows servers for you know build tools or you know IIS web servers or whatever, um, I'm never probably going to put WSL2 on there. Just because, like, if I need Linux, I'm probably going to run a Linux server, and, and exactly, that's easy. Exactly. That's easy to spin up. I was actually really surprised when they when they supported WSL on servers. I just kind of figured that would never happen. Uh, just because it, they were scoping it to uh, like a local Windows 10 machines usage, and you know, um, but it's cool that they do it. Like it's cool that it's supported. Well, um, for me, for me, the, the the main use case, and again, I like Docker, Kubernetes, and everything about around double cell is my hobby time. Okay, my second yeah. work, like I call it, right. in my day job, I have nothing to do with let's say all these technicalities. Uh, and I work for a pharma. And the, the, what it still taught me, my job, is that we are a full Windows shop. So when you go to servers, right, it will be Windows Server. So now, like you said, Brett, and that was also my thinking, actually, it was like, OK, if I need Linux, let's spin up like a Linux, let's say, box, right? I mean, that's a VM. Let's do a, a Linux VM. Well, it uh, happens that. If you don't have the proper validation, if you don't have the proper testing about like running a Linux VM, also how how do you manage like the monitoring, the the backups and everything, right? Like a normal server management, then you are back to square one where you can only use Windows servers. So WSL here and especially WSL two being a module or a feature of Windows Server, okay allows us to or would allow us let's say not allows us but would allow us to actually leverage all let's say the 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 base of windows uh server management so again backups lunch management and so on okay uh, monitoring and then on top you just let's say validate or check the the feature that is installed now on top of your server that is already validated so that's the only, let's say, from my perspective or from, from my background, let's say, that's one part that I know like WSL2 will, would help if I need to run some Linux, uh, let's say, uh, workloads on premises. Because again, if I cannot do it here, then I can maybe spin up something on the cloud and maybe the validation pass is a bit, let's say, tr less trickier. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but in my in my head, it makes. It does, yeah. Um, I'm answering some questions in chat real quick. If you enable, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so if there, so uh, a couple of quick fire questions. Um, uh, Toaster Chicken, I think, asked about uh, Hyper V Docker Desktop WSL2. Correct. If you so Docker Desktop, when you install it, it has two modes. You can either use the classic or legacy Hyper V mode or the new WSL2 mode. If you're, so if it's a brand new install, just go with WSL2. Like it's it's the future yeah. of Docker Desktop, um, and you don't need Hyper-V for that. You can run it on Windows 10 Home, which I think. Do we have demos? Should we jump to demos? 
we can. We can. We've been talking almost an hour, answering all sorts of great questions. Um, while you're setting that, while you're setting that up, and we're going to get uh, setting up your screen here. A um, couple more quick questions: Do we use WSL2 in enterprise? What is the main reason to concentrate on WSL2? Um, I would say it's the easiest way to run Linux on your Windows 10 machine. Like, totally. yeah, that would be the that and would be the reason. Again, co consumption of resources also might be the one of the best. Okay, so you oh don't yeah, have yeah. To speed it's faster. Up like, uh, yeah, you don't. Yeah, RAM CPU is shared. Okay, it's bad, but it's shared, so you don't have to let's say to have again the full blown uh, RAM and CPU consumed by your VM. Uh, they are again, they are let's say liver, uh, how do you say, putting it better let's mm -hmm. say, in the future for performance also. But again, I think it's uh, go go WSL two really it will be like a, a fast fast track to to get you onboarded with uh, Linux in your machine. Yeah. Um, Toaster Chicken saying it still harassed you to enable Hyper-V when I installed it last. Well, I don't know when that was, but if it was in the last six months, it will give you. It should give you an option, and you, if you read it carefully, it should. The only reason it may do that is if you're on a super old version, maybe of Windows 10 that hasn't been, because uh, they've they've actually backported all the patches for WSL2, so it really should just work. But if it doesn't, um, I mean, you know, we have the DevOps fan over there, DevOps fan chat, like just go there, get in the Windows channel or the, the Docker channel and ask for help and maybe someone can help steer you down that road. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Is there any GUI tools for managing all this cool stuff working in WSL2 with more granular controls over the whole subsystem itself, resource allocation limits, et cetera? Nice question. Uh, sorry, because I'm on my VM, so I don't see the screen anymore. Uh, no, very, very, very good question. Um, yes. So all the settings, uh, all, all of them, potentially not. But yes, there's definitely a tool called Raft uh, done by the, the, the great guys from Penguin uh, Distribution and also uh, White, White Water Foundry. As the name, you can find it on uh, on the store. Uh, it allows you to perform a series of tasks that, if you don't, let's say, are comfortable at at first with, let's say, all the update tasks and backup restore of the WSL itself, then that's the tool for you, definitely. Uh, there's other tools. Uh, I think that manage a little bit more, like the actually the the GUI. Uh, side of things that help you uh, getting started a bit faster than just organizing everything in everywhere. Uh, but for managing WSL distros mainly, then Raft is the tool, definitely. Okay. Um, is there a tool that allows you to create a Windows Docker image on Linux? No. Mm -mm. That's an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> You need Windows to make Windows binaries. Not unless we're talking about .NET Core, and then that's a little bit different. But I don't think that's what you're asking. Because um, you need the Linux, you need the Windows base images to create Windows can, images, and those don't run on Linux. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's see. I think we're catching Not up. The same kernel. Yeah. Um, Mir asks a lot of questions around uh, security. Uh, what's the best security practice when doing ops over WSL2? Um, uh, best security practices for WSL2. When on mm -hmm. WSL2, one and two, best security practices. I can't really think of any because it's just really for local Windows use on my local machine. Like That's how I, pr I picture it. So I'm not sure what I would do there. I'm not so, sure what concerns uh, there are. <laughs> SSH no, keys, no. maybe? Yeah, so they, they, they were, okay. So in the past, maybe the, the question is just a bit more related to WSL1. Uh, in the past, WSL1 was because it's, let's say, running on the Windows file system. So again, we are back to WSL translation to Windows file system. So we have potential performance issues. We found out, and by we is like person from Microsoft, and uh, I think Aiden was there also. But we found out like if we, let's say, a bypass the scanning of the Microsoft Defender of the, the let's say the, mm. the file system where WSL1 was let's say 
held, so it's a folder, right? But it was transforming file system. Then your performance will grow like five or ten times even sometimes. Mm. The issue is like again, Brian Kittleson, I get uh, him, just went ahead and showed that Windows Defender was able actually to scan correctly the, the files of WSL1. Uh, and he did like a, a small demo where he tries like uh, bad code. So again, don't ask me, I'm not a dev, but he tries to, to do something that is not, let's say, good. And actually Windows Defender blocked him. So the security risk, like still, it's, a, it's again, it's another feature, is another, let's say, layer of, or maybe surface of attack for sure. Now, one thing that we need to understand, like, WSL2, even though if you do like a sudo or you are root, you are not root or administrator on Windows. WSL2 is a process that runs onto or from your Windows own or your own Windows user, right? So your permissions go along. So if you really want to break something, you need to ensure that the person is administrator of the machine. Potentially, you need to run uh, a let's say, in elevator, uh, a terminal in elevated uh, um, permissions, like when we do some PowerShell uh, tasks, right? But, I mean, that will be the same as saying, like, PowerShell is, is unsecure. Because, again, when you are on WSL2, you are back to um, you are back to a shell, which is bash or fish or whatever, right? right? Finally, the only thing that really can be tricky is that if you don't have a firewall or if you have maybe ports open is that by default when you open a port on WSL2 it will open the port on uh, on Windows also again right. if you have the firewall if you have your router whatever it might block it again all right that's how I see at least um Mir is also mentioning uh, that uh, if you wanted to build that, that supposedly React OS, which I, it looks like I don't, I've never even heard of it, which is a, a open source re-implementation of Windows, um, yeah, yeah, okay. somehow that it can uh, build things for Windows. But uh, I, I'm skeptical. I would have to see a demo. I would have to see actually building a Windows container out with no windows installed whatsoever before i'd believe it i think somebody put a somebody send me a youtube link or tell me what to look up that's hard hard to imagine but you know the, the thing with, with wsl2 and like linux on windows nowadays is that every time i think there's something that's not possible it turns out it's actually possible and someone's already doing it um you know i said that about like having the kernel in linux that's you know, I think it was like Docker, LCAL. I was like, this is impossible. And then it was possible. And then, it, then QEMU was possible. I was like, oh, now we're running ARM on, on yeah. Intel. And then uh, and then WSL2 on servers. Yeah, we're not going to do that. No one's going to do that. Oh, and now it's like it just every time I turn around and think, no, this isn't going to happen, it happens. So who well, knows? The, 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 way, the way that you can, let's say, build it, and again, it's containers, but not really, is uh, lately, uh, I think... Uh, some of us like did the same test kind of, but it's like with kubevert, cube, sorry, kubevert. Okay, uh, yep. So you run, but it's a virtual machine, right? But you can run then a virtual machine that is Windows on uh, your Kubernetes nodes that are on Linux. But again, we are entering, let's say the, the, the schema on the other side, right? You are, yeah. you are on Linux and then you, you spin up like a VM. But like a Docker, like full simply Docker, like it is, and build Docker or run Docker, let's say Windows with the Windows um, with the Windows image, like you said, it's it's not possible because you don't have the kernel for uh, loading yeah. uh, everything. So yeah. But again, it, sound, it can be wrong. It, like you said, maybe maybe someone found the way. So it sounds tricky. Yeah, like someone. So I'd love to see an open source repo that go, that shows me how to build a Docker image that is a Windows Docker image with the proper manifest and the proper uh, image layers, but it's never used Windows to do it. That would be pretty cool. I, I mean, that would be neat. Uh, uh, it's not been previously possible, but I'd love to see it. All right, um, is it possible to run simultaneously native? 
Linux and Windows containers on Windows Server 2019 by using WSL2. Using LCAL made it possible at the same time, but Linux containers were actually VMs. All right, so uh, I told them in chat, uh, basically, just rewind 25 minutes. Uh, we talked about that. <laughs> I feel like we, we covered it. Uh, so because we're running out of time, I, I want to get to the rest of these questions. Um, let's see. Yeah, great conversation, everyone. Thank you. Um, All right, let's just do some demos. Uh, for all the users in chat, keep throwing in the questions. I'm gonna throw uh, Nuno's screen up and he's got some demos. Basically, we're just gonna run through them. Um, what do you wanna show off first? So, uh, yeah, let, let's start from the very beginning because uh, I think it's like the the way it's, uh, what's it supposed to be, but let's install in, in two ways differently. Hopefully it will, in, I, I'll do the install. Okay, I will do the installation in two in two different ways. I will explain my my setup here, and then we will just jump into directly on the host here uh, with uh, Docker desktop, and maybe the, the main questions like if I can use it uh, from uh, multi uh, multi uh, distros if I have them and so on. Sounds cool. Yeah. All right. So the on on my left here, I have like a, a Windows 10 Ohm. So again, remember Windows 10 Ohm. Um, until recently, it was not possible to have Docker Desktop on it uh, because uh, it was lacking the the visualization uh, processes. Since WSL2 came on, and since like the Windows 10 Ohm is quite a big share of uh, hobbyists in the world, right? Uh, Docker really went the extra mile and they actually brought actually Docker desktop uh, to the Windows 10 Home. So uh, with Windows 10 Home, what I will do is like I will do the, the normal pass. So I already downloaded uh, some needed, let's say, uh, uh, applications, especially this one. I will explain what it is. And then from uh, Windows, what you can do is like, uh, if we search directly for features, so I just pressed enter and I search for features, then I will have like turn on, oh, let me, it's like this one, turn on the, the Windows features on and off. And if I go there, now you will have a list. I will zoom out uh, or zoom in uh, whenever it's needed. But if we just go to the very end here, we will need two things. We will need the virtual machine platform. Okay, let me zoom in again, sorry. So we will need the virtual machine platform for WSL2 itself, okay? That's uh, that's uh, just, uh, if you want, the demon of Hyper-V running, okay? Then we will need also the, the WSL, okay, uh, feature also enabled. Now, there's a lot of news uh, that came up, like potentially, um, VirtualBox and VMware will run on the side of Hyper-V because they will be leveraging the, let's say, the demon of Hyper-V or the visualization uh, hypervisor and the UI and everything will be VMware or VirtualBox. If you need to do that, and again, I tried it out, let's say, a couple times and it, it works, but there's a lot of, let's say, bugs still, you still need to uh, ensure that the Windows hypervisor platform is actually used, okay? That's the really important part here. Because yeah, they, they, it's funny because they sound like the same thing. It's like virtual machine platform and Windows hypervisor platform sound like two different names for the same thing. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna clash with each other if I have both of them on, yeah. At all, at all. And that's really like, they, they have like two different proposals. Like this one is, uh, I don't know how to explain now because I, again, I, okay. I know just let's say maybe the basics, but the virtual machine platform is like it will it will allow you to run actually uh, Hyper-V based workloads directly, but Hyper-V based, okay, like WSL for example, or the the Sunbox. I don't think there it's there, but no, okay, or the Sunbox. The hypervisor platform allows you like to have let's say other work, not workloads actually, other uh, applications to connect to the hypervisor platform yeah. and start their own workload in their way, like VirtualBox and VMware in this case. That's how I see it. Again, if anyone on the chat yeah. knows 
better, please feel free to tell like I was totally wrong. That's okay. <laughs> I, Are I, those... I won't take it personally. Yeah, we did have a question about that in chat, and I, I might have skipped over it. So um, with this with this new setup, it is it is going to be possible to you know you can run WSL two. You're, that's a home machine, so it's not going to. You're not going to see Hyper-V in that list. But if it was a pro or enterprise yeah. machine, you could also run Hyper-V if you wanted to, and yeah. WSL2, right? And then if you wanted VMware or something else in addition, if like are those in betas, like I, I we're not really to the yeah. final thing yet, right? Where no, it, everybody can run everything. Like early beta. Okay, at best. but but that's where we're going, right? Like in a year from now, we'll probably all be sitting here talking about how. You can run WSL2, you can run Hyper-V, you can run VirtualBox, you can run VMware, you can run all these things all at the same time. And there's no more, you know, managing exactly. our boot profiles and trying to turn off Hyper-V at the service level. And like, that's what we always had to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cool. imagine, let's say here, typically, because you might have like several questions like this, it's like at home, on the home, uh, let's say, uh, version, I want WSL2 and Multipass. Multipass on OM only works with VirtualBox. Yeah. So because I don't have Hyper-V, like you said, that's correct. So now Multipass needs to leverage actually VirtualBox that will leverage itself actually the Windows hypervisor platform. Now, when I say early beta, I think like the Windows side is kind of done. And now it's more like the partners, in this case Oracle right. and um, and VMware, that they are really trying to to sort, let's say, the, the rough edges. But I guess during right. the year or maybe one year from now, that will be like flawless, definitely. Yeah. So let me just click OK. It will like uh, apply the settings and everything. And just one thing, uh, I will just click restart now here. But to be able to, again, remember, to be able to use uh, PowerShell, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm I'm tired already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. to, to, to use to use uh, WSL two, you need actually the, the the VM to have the nested. Um, yeah, nested virtualization. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if I do enable, uh, no, it's set. Sorry, set VM processor. That's it. Okay. Here from the host, I set. The Windows 10 Ohm, so this one, and I expose the virtualization extension. So that's what will allow me to actually have here the um, how do you say the the, the 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 nested virtualization that is needed for WSL2 and therefore for the uh, for Docker desktop oh, for also. Docker. Yeah, and I don't think that okay. So what we're talking about here, uh, back people up because this is a great topic, and um, I this is exactly what I do. I have a Windows server in the closet. It's running. Windows Server Hyper-V 2019, and I want to run, I don't want to run Docker on that. I want to create a bunch of VMs in my home lab. This is, sounds exactly like what you're doing. And I want, you know, I want Windows 10 Home. I want Windows 10 Server, uh, you know, I want, uh, or I'm sorry, Windows 2019 Server. I want, you know, a bunch of different variants of Server. I want different variants of Windows 10. Uh, and so, but in those in those VMs running on top of Windows Server 2019 with Hyper-V, those VMs also need to run their own VMs inside them. That's what we call yeah. in the industry nested virtualization. So it's like Inception. We've got VMs inside VMs. And, mm -hmm. and in order to do that, it's sadly, weirdly, not a checkbox yet in Hyper-V of the host on the bare metal. It's actually a PowerShell setting. We just saw you do that. Uh, you have to do it for each VM. When you first yes. create that VM, you have to do that one time and then it basically you know, toggles that little feature on. And then when you go and reboot that VM, it will then allow you to either you know, install WSL2 exactly. or a Hyper-V inside the VM or VMware or anything else that supports. Um, and and, and the, f the funny thing is, is like the history of this issue over the last four years of having Docker Desktop, we mm -hmm. have gone back and forth with it working, not working, working, not working. This version works, this version doesn't work. Like, and it's been this, and, and I'm ho I hope that we're now to the point now where it's like it's always going to work because WSL WSL two is going to make it a little bit easier. But I think in the past with Hyper V inside Hyper V with Docker inside the Hyper V, like there's so many levels down that Docker was having a hard oh, time true. with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, every time there was no, a new I Docker release, we were like, "Does it work?" 
Yeah. So here uh, I can see that I have double Excel because it tells me that, okay, it's installed, but I don't have any distribution, which is true. And if I just do a small double Excel dash help, uh, okay. Again, I'm, I'm, I, I zoomed a lot, but here you will see the different options. Um, and one of them, just to ensure that everything is, let's say, kind of installed as it should, is to actually run the set default version. Because right now, if you want like WSL, when you install WSL, the default version in the, let's say, the, the normal release, the, the production release of Windows 10 is WSL 1 still. Okay, it will change in the maybe the next or the, the, the two next, the two next. But here, if we do a WSL and we pass the, the command and we just write the number two at the end, it will tell us, okay, requires an update from the kernel. Please visit that, that stage, okay? Or that's a website, sorry. So that website has been visited, of course, and now I have it here. So that's the WSL update. That's actually the kernel that WSL2 needs and the init process that WSL2 needs to actually uh, starts. So let me quickly install it with the nice WSL logo. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, click next and click finish. And my understanding, okay. and because because my I had this question at first too when I was first doing all this stuff uh, like a year ago, and I was like, why are there so many steps? And the answer that was given to me by the Docker team, let me know if you agree with this, was that uh, the, the Microsoft team didn't want they wanted to be able to update the kernels separately yeah. so that it wasn't fixed on the do on the Windows version. And so they needed to have it as a separate installer for that flexibility and that maybe in the future they'll have a different, easier method. But for now we have to have yeah. this separate install. The, the the new future methods, I will show it to you quickly. But okay. this one is exactly that. It's it's no more bound. So the first WSL2 insiders were bound to the WSL2, let's say uh, the kernel was also waiting the the, the, the releases of the Windows Insiders themselves. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure, let me see if we do have already, but I'm, I'm quite sure, sure that we don't. Yeah, we don't have the info yet. So uh, in the future release, and I will show you uh, quickly, you can see like um, which one uh, you, how do you say, which uh, version of the kernel are you running? And then, uh, you will have something called WSL updates, and this one will actually uh, update the kernel. That's the WSL update, okay? So now, okay, we'll let us run again. So for information on key difference with WSL2, please visit this site. Though this means that now I have WSL2 installed, okay? So let me quickly go into the store so I, I I'm with my account, so that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do roadblocks first, and then we're gonna do Docker. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta install roadblocks oh. for Docker. <laughs> so sorry, I know that the, my preferred is Ubuntu. I I, I love them yeah. all. You'll see you'll see soon. I love I, I love you all. All the Linux distributions. If I can run them, I will run them. It, it taught me a lot, actually. That's 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 a good point. It, it's like it taught me like how to use maybe Pac-Man on one side, AppGet on the other, uh, Yum again. So WSL two because you can like say if you bring your mentality of containers, okay, in the, in this new world of uh, microservices, my my own let's say distros are not let's say uh, forever. I, I tend to crash them a lot. And that's how I, I, I've been doing it. So yeah. I'm not afraid anymore to just like spin up something, do something crazy, break it. Okay, it didn't work. Okay, let me unregister or delete if you want, but that's unregistering the, um, let's say the, the the distro in WSL and then launch it again. Okay, for example. Okay. Am so I doing now, that from the command line? Like, do you manage Sorry, that from yeah. the command line? Do you manage like the deletion of these or yeah, from the yeah, command exactly. line? Okay. So that's that's all. This WSL now. If I just run WSL, it will still complain because if I just run WSL dash uh, L for list, or let me do the the long uh, the verbose. Okay, it will still 
tell me, okay, there's nothing installed, which is not true because I just, let's say, right. I'm sure that I installed Ubuntu. Well, it, it, it's installed as an application. We see it here, okay? But it's not installed, sorry, it's not installed as a, let's say, yet it's not registered against WSL2. Okay. So to do that, Registered, either yeah. you click on the on the button. So that's normally the the shortest the shortest pass is really to click on the button here, or uh, just to keep on the nice terminal. Okay, I will just say uh, sorry. I will just launch the exe because again, I know it exists because I just installed it, oh. and I will just press okay. enter. And from here, I can still stay on my nice terminal. And it will just take a few minutes, okay? And by few minutes, it will be like really, really fast. So while it's doing that, okay, really, really fast, okay? So again, okay, it's installed, and now I can do uh, an update, for example, without any setup, of course. So it's just running. But here we go. We have it. Yeah. One question I had, and I thought this was the case. Um, Aren't there multiple Ubuntu versions in the store? Like, can't you do uh, yeah. you know eighteen oh four and twenty oh four? So, I, all I saw you download was Ubuntu, uh, just Ubuntu. What does that mean? Yeah. Is that so? Like, Ubuntu, so, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, yeah, no. I, I think you're going to answer it. Like, is that just the? That's not an LTS version. That's just the latest release of the. No, actually, uh, there there is the latest release, but it's like hidden right now, so we can okay. search it through the through here, but we can find it through a, a website. So I will send it after on the chat or Hayden, if you still there, please just pass your uh, uh, distro, the Ubuntu, uh, the normal Ubuntu. But um, other than that, no, Ubuntu here is like, is the, the latest, is like current, if you want. So current okay. right now is 2004 LTS. So the ones that you will be able to search, like uh, on the store will always be, at least for Ubuntu, will always be actually the LTS versions. Now, the, the, let's say the beauty kind of, of it is that if I install Ubuntu, just like I did, and now let me just uh, get down, uh, get out of it. And again, I will just do this time the short naming, okay, but it's like list of boards. Now I can see that I have my Ubuntu running and mind the name here, okay? So because it was quite fast, let me just quickly, and then we will jump into the, the future. So here, I will just now install the Ubuntu 2004 because, well, that's the LTS that I was searching for. Weird. Okay. So now again, if I try to see the list, you will not see it because it's registered. Right. Okay. It's repetita. So now I will launch Ubuntu, but I press twice. Oh, tab, okay. Yeah. So, you hit so tab. now I have yeah. another exit. Okay, so it means that I have another distro which is on disk and with, let's say, its own file system. Okay, so now if I press here, you see that I'm like asking or asked to, okay, wait again, blah, blah, blah. So now let me just do, uh, yeah. I think it's like Control P, no, Control Shift P. Yeah, cool. So I let me just split pan vertically. No, actually, that's not what I wanted. I wanted horizontally. Sorry for that. Okay, and here, let me go back again. So that now we have like two ways of entering our own distributions. So either I go by the exe, okay, I mean, or I go by the name. And dash D is the same as dash dash distribution. And then I can tell Ubuntu. And now remember the name that I told you that was important. That's yeah. what tells me where I go. Okay. Okay. Now okay. my my mine just this small here. Like when I went with the exe, it goes like into let's say the Ubuntu application that tells like okay I'm a WSL distribution, and I was at home. Now when I go through the WSL. What it does is like it translates where I am and it tells me, okay, you should start here. And maybe sometimes that's where maybe some people might be like confused. It's like your home here is not your home of Windows. It's really like separated and I'll, I'll, I'll showcase that, okay? Right. So here, right. if, I, if I do like a, just an LS, not a 
long list, but if I do an LS, you see like I have the NT, NT user, the OneDrive, the save games, blah, 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 okay? If I just do the CD without any argument, it will bring me back to my own. And now if I do an LS, well, I don't have anything. If I do an LS dash A for all, then I will see my dot files. So my home of, let's say, the distribution is not the same. But remember, here I'm on the, let's say, the Ubuntu normal, the first that I installed, okay? So I will just touch test, okay? So now if I do an LS, I have test. Now let me go back to my Ubuntu 2004, which, by the way, just that we are sure that we understand the full thing, I will just... Sorry, I use the, a lot the term just, but it's not just. It's like I will I will do the, the cat OS release, and then I can see that it's a LTS of Ubuntu. Let me complete my setup here. I will not do this time the, the app get, but here, if I do an LS, and you see that I'm at home again, right? And if I do a uh, cat, ETC OS release, and I have exactly the same. Again, so I have two distributions now of actually Ubuntu. Now, it doesn't refresh by default, so let me just, oh, sorry, really, I, I need to stop just thinking. You're so fine. If I, come, <coughs> if I come back here, now, my terminal actually is aware, is WSL aware. And it tells me like, okay, here are your two distributions. I have Ubuntu and I have Ubuntu 2004. And if I do the WSL-L-V again, you can see that, well, I have my two Ubuntus. All right. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and so I should mention that you're using Windows Terminal, which is the best terminal on Windows 10 now. I love oh, yeah. it. I used to be a big fan of a lot of alternative uh, uh, terminals, and in my courses I used to talk about them. But nowadays, like use Windows Terminal, you get it from the Windows Store. Uh, you're seeing a great demo of it because it has because it, it now has the multiple tabs. It has the uh, split yeah. tabs, and um, all right, so. Now you've got multiple, but you don't yet have Docker, right? So we're still in exactly. just WSL land. And so now here, you're about to, okay. Exactly. So now I, I, I went, let's say, the normal pass when you know what you have to do, okay? Uh, Docker did something really, really neat, is that if you launch without doing all the steps that I did before, it will actually guide you, okay? So because I know, because I went to the WSL page first of Microsoft, I think you posted it before. So you have the WSL explaining you like, okay, how to install WSL, WSL2 and so on, okay? And now I will be installing Docker finally, okay? And here you see install required Windows components for WSL2. Actually, it will help you, like I said. Okay. So in my, in my case, in my case, because I installed everything, I jump over kind of, and then it will, go directly into yeah, like uh, installing Docker. It's smart okay. enough to just skip ahead to what the next step is. Yeah. And isn't it using and, your default your default WSL2 isn't that <laughs> what picks? Good question. Very good question. Now because now you got multiple VM you got these multiple they're not even VMs. They're just multiple WSL2s environments. Exactly. I don't know what, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it's it's like we call it distros, like Linux distros, right? And WSL2 is just a layer that allows us to run actually WSL2. Uh, WSL2 is the, the layer that allows us to run the, the Linux distributions. Sorry, I'm really. Yeah. <laughs> so no, that's okay. Now, the, the Docker desktop, what is doing behind the scenes, and we'll see that, uh, is that it's installing its own distributions, one for data and one for, let's say, the running the daemons. And then, it will share with the default uh, distribution that we have, it will share the CLI by default, okay? okay? So without doing anything, okay, let me quickly, hopefully go here and go to the Ubuntu one, because it's, oh, you see the asterisk here? Actually, sorry, I'm pointing my screen, but anyway. So yeah. the asterisk here is like the default one, okay? So now if I do Docker, 
right? It tells me, mm, okay, uh, sorry, but I don't found any Docker. Can be right. installed with this one. Well, no, thank you. I want Docker desktop, okay? So that's an excellent point because that's that's like a generic Linux message, right? That's saying, oh, well, this binary yeah. isn't installed, but I know that there's an app package that has that binary. Yeah. So it's trying to help you, but it's yeah. actually the wrong thing to do there. Yeah. And actually in the, in the let's say, in the future versions um, in Insiders. So here I'm on Insiders, but I will yeah just quickly touch base here. But yeah. like once you are Insiders, when you launch Docker Desktop, it will tell you like, okay, the, please install WSL2. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure I downloaded it here. So. Yeah, I don't have it there. Okay. So, um, yeah. Well, you can yeah, do that. Before. You can do that because we do have questions that you can answer while you're, if you if you wanted to go uh, farther. It, it, it doesn't, I know we're running over and, you know, it's fine with me, but. Um, I, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's pretty cool. So now, okay, so on that one, it's installed Docker. It's rebooting. It's already booted. Um, uh Manvidar is asking, the only thing which bugs me is that Git works very slow on Windows file systems slash mount. We need to use Git yeah. exe instead of Git installed in the distro to make it fast. Okay, so uh, in other yeah. words, it sounds like their source code is on the host file system and they're yeah. trying to run Git in Linux. Exactly. So this, so this back, leads us back, back, back to the discussion before, actually. Yeah, this leads me down the road of like, what is the optimal setup? Is it is it developer? I mean, I, I know you've got, you've got some VS stuff to talk about. Is it is it cloning my source code into the Linux distros and never cloning it to the host? Is it is it using VS Code and the fancy container plugins? Uh, like, what is what do you think? Okay, no. So very valid questions, all of them, actually. And let me show you because the the setup, the la okay, so short answer, the latest answer is the correct one. Stay on your uh, WSL2 for performance again. Stay on your WSL2 file system and connect uh, VS Code actually to your code. Now, the VS Code has several plugins for remote. There's remote SSH, there's remote Docker, and there's remote WSL2, okay? So when you are in uh, VS Code, so uh, let me maybe install it also, so like that we fully done here. Yeah, and I think what you're, what? What you're clicking into there. Um, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, it's the... What we're talking about is specifically in VS Code. I know we don't all use VS Code. Like some of us have, um, you know, like there's Ruby Mine. There's there's a million editors, right? <laughs> uh, if you're using Vim or Emacs, you probably love li living in Linux and you only are doing it in Linux and you're probably trying to avoid the Windows binaries of those. But if you're on a Windows, you know, um, editor, um, of course, we love, a lot of us love VS Code. So you should check it out if you haven't but it has add-ons for a lot of these types of problems. So, sorry, I just wanted to interject that there. Uh, please continue. No, 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 but that, that's perfect. And actually the first time that, uh, that we run VS Code after we install, again, there's always steps, okay, to follow, but it doesn't mean that you cannot reach the same point. The steps that I'm just going through are maybe the, let's say the, the, the least, uh, how do you say? Uh, sorry, uh, they are the, the the path of really the least resistance of right. getting everything, all the pieces together. Okay, so first I install all the modules, all the features that I needed. Then I install the WSL2, uh, let's say uh, kernel. Then finally I installed my distro. I installed Docker, and now when I installed uh, VS Codes. It doesn't tell me anything about Docker, but however, it tells me something about WSL. So do you want to install the module remote WSL? So it's not really recommended per se, but please do it because it will just ease your life. And right. how much? It's simple to see how much. So here I am again into Ubuntu. I wanted just to showcase that now I have like two other distros that are the Docker desktop distros, okay? 
like I said, there's one data. Uh, I don't remember exactly what they put in it, but it's there. And then we have now the desktop. And now without doing anything, I know my Docker is running because it's here. Let me put it down there. And remember before I did the Docker, just Docker like that, sorry. Just Docker like that. And it gave me like, oh, please install Docker IO. And now if I run Docker, I have Docker, done. And I didn't install any package or anything from the, let's say the site of uh, WSL. So if I do a Docker version now, okay, uh, I'll, I'll check why, but we'll see. But then I can see that my Docker version is running, okay? And everything looks good. And I know, I might know why, because it didn't, do again Docker version should be okay now yeah because I, I was not in the group of docker like again a normal uh, linux uh, installation right uh, so now we can see that docker engine is running i have the 2010.2 and here we go i have docker so again docker on i will just have like it deleted it and i'll take the the demo like everyone and if i run just an alpine again nice without the just if i run alpine i have alpine and if i do the apk updates and yeah APK, it's all happening add the best editor before even this <laughs> code i'm showing uh my team my team vim nice okay so by I the way thank you uh, by the way, thanks, Max. Uh, thanks so much for the donation. Uh, I really appreciate it uh, for a super sticker. Always, always appreciate you out there that are supporting this channel. Um, and yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 no. Oh no, please say thank you. That's important. And if I run here, so again, I didn't run as Again, the Ubuntu dash blah, blah, blah. I went now through the double cell command, right? And I'm here, like I said. And now if I just try to do Docker, well, I'm back, actually. And I thought it was only insiders, but look at this now. The command Docker could not be found in this double cell to distro. So now Docker and double cell actually is, is aware that we do have some potential Docker, okay, somewhere that is actually the Docker desktop. So instead of Docker IO, now I have this nice thing. Of course, I can go Docker IO. I could do, uh, just do the, the normal Docker installation. Okay, I'm not even sure it's like, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know the name? My heart. No Docker. No Docker. Okay. Weird. I thought they were the they had a package. Oh. Okay. Like I said, I didn't do the updates before. Sorry. My bad. So back <laughs> to what I was saying. So I didn't update like the list of packages that were available to me. So now if I do the install of Docker IO, it will install Docker IO, container B and run C. Uh, well, container D, yeah, container D run C. And once it's done, so remember I just run a, a, a package, right? So if I do just a Docker image lists, I see that I have my Alpine. And now I have Docker also installed here, but normally it will complain because it's not loaded. So yeah. Okay, we. I don't want to lose too much time now, but uh, like sudo service Docker start or up. I don't remember now. It doesn't recognize Docker. So you need to first, like, let's say, um, use Docker, like start Docker now. And if I do a Docker version, you'll see that I have the CLI, but it cannot connect to the daemon because I didn't start it, which is correct. 
I don't remember the command now by heart. It means so much time that you didn't use it like this. Normally, I just use Docker desktop, actually. So anyway, here we go. So we have two ways of installing Docker, plus this one, I just need to start uh, Docker. Maybe if I do Docker D, but I don't want to manually. I don't remember. I know there's a, it's documented. You can start, let's say, run your Docker, install Docker inside WSL2, and then start uh, Docker directly. Mm. I know it's um, documented somewhere, but uh, yeah. Yeah, did you? So, okay, so so you have the daemon in there. Uh, yeah, Mandavar is saying system control, start Docker. If that's, if that's what you're trying to do. No, good good point. But remember what I said. So by default, so you can do it, by the way, but uh, not like that. So if I do, if I do uh, PS, UX, for example, here are my processes. And there that's is all. no system D. No system D, exactly. <laughs> right. By default, OK? No system right. D by default. Still. <clears throat> It does sudo service, it, uh, I think it's like dash dash status all, something like this. Yeah, okay, I'm not too much lost now, but here I don't see Docker exactly. Uh. So one question I have is, because uh, I have not tested this. Okay, so if we're saying for the best performance, I should clone my source code into the Linux image. So that's going to be in a specific distro, right? Like each distro has its own file system. So I've got to, I've got to do my stuff in a specific. Exactly, exactly. So what actually what Docker did is like you have a, if you want, you can do it like in a one distro. OK, uh, let's say this one here. So you git clone something. And then you bind mounts. So that's important to explain. Let me just uh, mount and then grab. Uh, if I do MT, C, oh no, MT WSL. You have a share, uh, let's say a shared space now between the distros uh, where you can actually mount um, your distro, let's say. Uh, your own distro uh, directory, for example, and you bind mount, okay, it into this uh, shared space, the WSL, uh, MNT WSL. So this is like a tempfs, okay? So why I say like bind mount instead of copying it, it's because like that you are ensuring that uh, you are not, let's say, losing it once you, let's say, close, uh, uh, sorry, WSL, yeah. okay? Yeah. So. I can I can do like something like uh, I add a, a test file here, right? So it's it's empty, but it's still a test file that this one does not have. Let me go back here. Okay. So now if I cp my test file into my shared space, okay, I can see it also again, and here it is. Okay. And now you can see what Docker did, again, very intelligently. It's like these here, these files are actually from, and remember, if I do like this one, are from here, actually. This is a distro, right? We don't interact with it. It's like Docker right. desktop interacting with it. But still, it's like a distro. It, it has its own files and everything. And this one mounted or bind mounted so just like a connect uh, a connection, uh, Docker desktop, the bind mounts here, and data. Okay, which is like the I don't even know what it is. Let me see. Yeah, some data and cache. That's potentially the, the yeah. version need. Okay, but that's okay. So double cell uh, here. You can see also. I'm I'm on my uh, WSL2, and I could call like uh, WSL.exe, which is like uh, uh, an application from Windows, right? So if I do Notepad in this case, because maybe it's more, uh, and say I want to Notepad what I just saw, tests, and I do like uh, hello from Notepad. 
I save it and I close it. If I do the cat MNT WSL tests, it tells me a loop from Notepad. So there's what I call the interrupt world. Still, sorry, and I, I, I stopped going in tangents here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. So when I, I open, look. yeah. So I'm just trying to think about like, okay. So okay, let's say I've I've put source code there. So so you, we're saying, you're saying put your code in mount WSL, right? And then it outlives. No, put your code here in in your in your own distro. Again, mount WSL is a tempfs file system. Okay. Meaning, when, whenever you will close WSL or if you need to reboot, it's gone. Okay. So, so what Docker did, it's like they do like uh, okay. Let me let me do it differently then. Uh, okay, dear. Uh, test mount. Okay, and what they what they did is like they will like mount uh, like, like, like that, and then test mount towards MNT. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't create the the point. Uh, okay, oh, so you're saying this is a way to see things on multiple distributions? Is that what you're saying? Like exactly. Use, exactly, use, exactly. use the tempfs as a way to bridge between two different distributions. Okay, 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 got it, got it. Yeah. So, so if you needed to, I mean, the reality is, is that someone's probably going to pick one. They're going to do their work in there and they might have other ones for just curious nature or something. But, it, you know, if you're testing, if you're running stuff in containers, that's the kind of the whole point is you don't really care. You don't have to test across different distros or do anything like that. It's all happening in containers. So, um, okay. So you pick, so let's say you get, you're using the default. So um, I've, I've cloned my code and I'm putting it in my home directory of my WSL2 distro, my favorite. Whatever it is, yeah. and and then um, we get that VS Code has some savviness to it, where it actually can work. It can understand WSL two and work more directly with WSL two. But what if I don't have that editor? So you just showed like Notepad opening up a file from mm -hmm. the command line. But if like if I had Ruby Mine or Sublime Text or Notepad plus plus or something like that, how would I get to these? How would I get to my source code that's in, you know, one? So, just pick one of these. Right. So again, VS Code is really uh, again is an editor. It will uh, it 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 will not just open the file. So just opening the file itself, you can kind of do it uh, from everywhere. Okay, from whichever tool you have, but it will be like from Windows perspective. Okay, and you will have to go through. All the let's say the windows. Uh, I didn't show you it here, but, but uh, no, it doesn't have it. Let me show it here. But I need to have it install. Sorry. So let me show it here finally. And here you will have this Linux here. So let me just do it here. Okay. So Windows Insiders is aware of let's say every distribution that you have. And I can go to, let's say, to its own file system. So let's open Arch here, for example, and I can see the boot, the dev, etc., and so on. Okay, so that's by, pretty cool. Let's say, yeah. So this, yeah. so this visualization in Explorer is coming eventually to release Windows, but right now it's only Insiders. Exactly. So I guess it will because I don't have it here. So yeah. uh, I guess it will be coming maybe this. This uh, this release, which is maybe March or April, uh, the next one. Uh, but yeah, so once you have that, actually from here you don't have it here. But uh, there's a uh, if I do WSL, uh, just WSL does it sit? No, it will complain. Okay, so if I do WSL dollar exactly, so that's the yeah. the old way is like if I do WSL dollar. Yeah, dollar sign. I'm yeah, kidding. we've got people yeah, in chat okay. saying try WSL dollar sign. Yeah, I know. Okay, so now, okay, <laughs> yeah. so I see. Now I'm seeing those instances. So really, just yeah. the new the new feature is it actually just shows up as a first class citizen in the left hand bar rather than you having to know this little 
you know, this little secret command of backslash backslash WSL dollar sign. Cause that does but feel kind of hacky or like, you know, getting in mm-hmm. from a hidden, hidden directory. And, you know, we've had that kind of thing with all the various virtualizations that people do, right? Uh, uh, VirtualBox, VMware, Hyper-V, like there's been mm-hmm. these ways you could usually get inside the VM from the host. Um, and since yeah. when WSL is like that, it's essentially doing the same thing, right? This is similar. Uh, we're just, we don't yet have it as a... Yeah, but the, the, the intelligent part of Visual Studio Code is that it goes a little bit, uh, let's say, further now. So here, I have like this here uh, icon. Again, I have this icon here, which is like uh, open a remote window, right? And what I will do is like, I will check the extension that I have here and let me actually search for, uh, let's say Docker extension. Okay, I will install it. All good, all nice. I have now my, my tiny wheel on, on the bar also, and it's installed. Okay, so I, I can work with Docker and okay, I don't have, you can see my image that I pulled out before. Perfect, so it knows also my environment, okay? Because I was using uh, WSL2, uh, let's say Docker desktop, even if it's on WSL2, it's still Docker desktop on Windows, right? So in Visual Studio Code here, as the awareness of Windows. But let me now, instead of going there, let me go into a new window using a distro, okay? So that's what we installed. And now let me get actually to the normal, okay, to the default distro. And look now, the bar. Now it has the awareness that it's no more the other one, still here. Mm. But I can now use the maybe the, just the how do you say the the modules the plugins that I want by distro maybe this distro is for Go development or Python or even I'm running maybe a Kubernetes on it I don't know right so now if I want it again look at this local installed so remote uh, WSL and Docker and now WSL Ubuntu installed and I don't have anything, okay? So this one is like the one that is running on the other side, and this one is the one running here. And again, if I try to install now Docker again, installing WSL Ubuntu, okay? But it tells me, be careful. Uh, yeah, so I need to enable it, sorry. So I'm installing it, and if I click on it, again, it recognizes my Docker desktop, but this time from the eyes of Ubuntu. Okay. So I, I know it, it seems like, I don't know, or either complicated or either simple, like the, but with all the, like we call, like we were talking all this time, right? With all the inceptions around, having like this connecting so easily. Just yeah. for us, just by installing something is like mind blown, really. Yeah. Like the, the huge work of the Docker team of Microsoft also, it's just like incredible. Yeah. And like Mandavar is saying in chat, um, I think th- th- there's lots of ways you can remote. Like there's lots of options for remote. I believe there's like SSH, there's other ways. And, and really what, uh, as I understand it, VS Code is essentially running a little server daemon on that exactly. remote, that remote, I'm, I'm using the air quotes, remote Linux machine, uh, and then talking back to your IDE on your host machine. I've done this personally um, uh, this way. Uh, I've done this with over SSH to a server remotely. I've done this. Yeah. Uh, there's also the, the not related necessarily to the remote feature, but the code pairing features are mm-hmm. off the charts awesome and fantastic. This is why like so many developers are moving from whatever editor they had to VS Code. I don't always use a, a GUI editor. I, I'm a Vim person, but if I am using GUI, mm-hmm. it's always going to be VS Code. Um, I'd say 80% or more code demos at a conference talk nowadays of every conference, you know, because you and I were like Docker people. We just were at, we're at, you were at all the Kubernetes conferences, the Docker conferences, the cloud native conferences, all those. And uh, it's amazing. It doesn't matter who, what OS they're running, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'd say eighty percent of the demos are on VS Code. Um, like, unless they're if they're if they're doing it in Vim or Emacs, 
that's fine. But like, if they're going to use a GUI, 80% of those GUIs are going to end up being VS Code. And that's been like that for years, which is like, we could have a whole separate show just on VS Code. Um, because if you if someone's not spent time using it and they have their preferred editor, uh, it's it's a tough one. I mean, it's obvi- it's not the fastest, but it's fast enough for most things I do. And, you know, it's just amazing what it can do. So there's a lot of cool stuff in there. And this is just making so it. So I just wanted, sorry, because the others might be looking. Normally I could call code, but I guess that I need to actually fully restart uh, so to, to be, let's say, aware of the pass of Windows Pass. So let me just do quickly. So when I do this one here, okay, it's a bit extreme right now. It's like I'm shut downing the full VM. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, for the ones who know quickly, so HVC is like Hyper V. Uh, CLI, if you want, but it won't see anything. Okay, and actually, we don't even have HVC like this. Exactly, but we might have the H- HCS tag. Okay, and if I do a list now, you can see here we cannot really interact because it's a diagnostic tool, but we can see the micro VM that has been created in uh, nice. this virtual platform okay so it will be issues yeah so now let me actually kill it all and look here quickly at docker so it killed everything okay and now it's not really running actually docker desktop tells me okay the back end has stopped <laughs> you want to restart it yes okay sorry i i did something wrong yes thank you help me and again, that's this self-awareness came really into like several processes of, of feedbacks and everything. That's why the community is so important. Whenever you are in WSL2, on Docker, on Kubernetes, whatever, okay? The community is the ones like testing really things in some different ways. And suddenly you can provide the feedback. And then we have tools like those that come into play. Nice. Um... Well, this has been a ton and I have learned a bunch because like okay. there like this rabbit hole of WSL is deep and wide and I don't get to spend time with it every day. So I'm so glad to have now my new favorite WSL expert that I'm going to bug the crap out of every time I have a question. Because okay. there's a lot of Windows developers and I don't always have all the answers for them, especially in my courses. Um, which if you if you're in my in my courses like those yeah. we need to replace those videos because they're they're all still based on the old Hyper V solution, um, and mm. we've and, and like um, um, Ashish I think is how you say that. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. He was saying uh, there is so there like just in the fat past few years the amount of tooling we've got on Windows 10 between WSL2 and Windows Terminal and VS Code with remote and just like. You, on and on and on and on, you know, not even talking about ARM yet. Like there's just so many things that are innovating uh, for the developer and making it easier for the developer and the operator. Cause I'm, I'm mostly ops. I just happen to have to use a code editor to do my opsing. Um, so I do care about them and um, we, we all got to run Docker nowadays. So, yeah. and um, I don't know if you had any other demos, but we are, we have run now for two hours. So I don't want to, I don't want to put you yeah, to sleep. Put anyone to sleep. Just, oh. Just oh, yeah, one last because it's the future mode, okay? So yeah. everything that I explained just before, we have like two tools that are really important. WSL is like now aware of the, let's say the, the, the store. And instead of going, installing, clicking the buttons and everything, now if we simply, Ooh. simply because it's asking me, it's showing me how to, and I say Ubuntu. And again, mind the asterisk, it means that if I just do, WSL dash dash install by default it will be Ubuntu. Okay. Uh, sorry, Aiden. Uh, I will do Debian now. <laughs> so sorry for my canonical, canonical friends. Uh, let's just install Debian. So remember, I didn't do anything. So look at this beauty now. Like installing virtual machine platform inst- instead of thinking about what I needed to do, it's installing the subsystem for Linux. Now it's even downloading the WSL kernel that I needed, right? To run. Finally, he runs it that. Now, remember, we still need to reboot it because it's like features that interact directly with the kernel of Windows. Uh, Mind two things. Uh, Like you can see, I'm on uh, Microsoft or not here. 
but sorry let me uh, go like this okay i'm on insider preview dev channel so this is the last build or maybe today it was one but for today more proposed i didn't let's say try it out and by doing just the install i okay let me go fully fully cancel now because it will be easier i can restart the computer what well, three okay. oh sorry yeah no okay. I, was gonna, I was gonna throw you a question while that was rebooting um uh yusuf is asking do we know if sec basically the question is do we know if sec comp is enabled in these machines or um because he's a he's asking about uh you know if docker is using how docker and subcomp work so i can i can speak to docker and seccomp on a standard linux host but i have no idea if these vms even bother with seccomp um or any other t technology like that like app armor or uh se linux right. or whatever uh, i mean I, I, our theory is is that this is probably using name spaces already to to do the container like things for just setting up this different WSL2 stuff, but I don't know the internals. Do you, I don't know how, if you so have any more information. So, comp, and again, uh, again, I'm I'm kind of mid, let's say Linux guy here. Uh, Secomp, I would say yes. App Armor, SC Linux, no, definitely not. You can, you, you have to twist like a lot of things. Seconds, however, um, I'm not sure. I would, I would say potentially yes, but you will need to see how Docker actually runs their own, uh, let's say, their own distro. Okay. So here, uh, quickly, oh, okay, it was too fast. But here, it, when I rebooted, now it's directly installing uh, Debian again. Yeah. So this time around, I didn't have the choice, like I said, to choose my terminal, so it's using the old terminal. But here we go. We have Debian again. It was way faster than the first one, right? <laughs> yeah. So for the second, uh, I'm not sure. I would say, I'll say yes, but I. I mean, Docker. The Docker. The yeah, the Docker thing. engine wants to use Seccomp by default, and it will try to use it out of the gate. I don't even know. So, so Docker comes shipped with a default setcom profile that is actually uh, a reduced uh, feature instruction set. So, uh, just like that's why I argue like running things in Docker automatically makes it more secure from the giving the, basically the application has less access to the host and to the kernel because things like kernel uh, um, features and setcom and other stuff. But um, yeah, you would probably like maybe. I don't know. We could Sorry. probably do a Docker info and probably get some data out of Docker info if it said set comp was enabled. That might 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 because yeah. that the daemon is running in there, so that might work. Um, yeah. And normally it will list set comp as one of the things when you do the info command. So yeah, it has some issues here, and yeah, set comp. Well, it says security options set comp profile default. So I don't know if that necessarily means that seccomp is working. It just means that I think that just means that it, it tells you what profile it's using, which is unless you specify one of the command lines, it's always going to be default. That's a good question. I don't actually know um, yeah. either. And I and Google's not really helping me. There's not really anyone talking about that. On that's that's really more of a WSL two question than it is Docker. I guess so. And unfortunately, I'm so much not really into. Let's say looking really at all the internals. So second, right. but that, I, I would say I would say like second PS, SC Linux and App Armor. I know for a fact no by default they are not uh, yeah. enabled. Uh, App Armor actually you don't even have like the uh, the kernel module actually to run App Armor. There you need like to to build it yourself. So yeah. Oh okay. Someone's asking in chat what is sec comp. It is one of the many Linux security features for helping to limit. Uh, how much access to the kernel your applications might have. And so Docker uses it along with at least three other security technologies. Maybe, well, I could actually probably list five. There are actually, it's a lot, if you just go look in the Docker docs, if you're interested in all these things, go look up security in the Docker docs. It's all in there, detailed explanations of the, 
of app armor se linux set comp kernel capabilities um all that stuff is all in there and and i love it um uh user namespaces c groups and namespaces like all those different te- terminology that's all in there so um i recommend just go googling them and you'll probably find the docker docs right away so sorry you were going to say something on that other screen you were highlighting something and i interrupted you um no, no, I, I was just looking at what, what was mounted by default. So oh, all okay. the groups are uh, also mounted. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, so that's why you, we can still consume, let's say, Docker itself on the distro, like Docker Desktop did, right? Remember that Docker Desktop is really like you, itself using, uh, uh, I don't know, how do you say uh, a distro? Okay, so let me just run again a PowerShell, but in the tab this time. Uh, so if I do again, cell dash l dash v, so you can see that here is where the magic, let's say, happens. Right. But yeah, so yeah, so Debian is installed uh, on the on the other nodes, and uh, and yeah, that was way faster. Like that. Normally, you have to wait maybe one or two releases between, like, when it let's say takes shape into insiders. Uh, so feel free to participate in the insider program again. You will yeah. be able to provide some feedback also about the cell. Yeah. So hopefully this year, but um, not guaranteed. Hopefully. Yeah, you never know. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they do pull things out. It's pretty rare, but um, sometimes ideas get pushed out. All right, so we have, this is like the amazing WSL2 marathon show. We are actually going to be here all night. Nuno's getting no sleep before work tomorrow. Um, yeah. No, we're just kidding. We're just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, those are some great demos. Thank you so much for putting those together in just a few days. I know we had very little time to get to pull this together, yeah. and I, I appreciate you um, totally having uh, the, the time, you know, making the time to get all that set up for us. And um, for those of you wondering... Um, you can see his Twitter handle down below his name, um, Nunix tech. Uh, he's, 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 he writes on the blog WSL.dev. So you can check that out and he's a Docker captain. So you can basically find him everywhere. You can find him in the Docker, uh, community Slack. You can find yeah. him, uh, on social media. Like, yeah. So, um, please do check out what he, the work he's working on and feel free to bug him on Twitter. I gave you permission to bug him on, on all the WSL2 questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and uh, he will be in some future episodes someday when we have more WSL tough stuff to talk about, maybe a VS Code show, who knows? Like, y- you never know yeah. when other Docker captains might show up here on Gladly. the channel. So thank you again, you know, for so much for being here. Uh, thank you for staying up late with us. And for yeah, those of you, rest. yeah, uh, it was great. I learned a ton. And thank you all on the internet for watching and hanging with us on yeah. this two-hour live stream about all things Windows 10 awesomeness. So uh, we're here live every Thursday, same time. So come back next week. Um, I don't know actually who the guest is on my list, but we may get, have a guest. We may not. Uh, I'm pretty excited. We got some guests uh, getting on the show in the next couple of months. So that's going to be fun. And we will see you here live next week. Bye. Ciao. Bye, everyone.